Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, radio channel. And of course, uh, yesterday, May 8th, I uh, did a little um, what if video uh, series. And some of you said, hey, this is kind of fun. So the what if video series is what if I would have only one radio. And it started with, of course, what if the S350 350DL from Ethan. And by the way, the Grundig edition is exactly the same thing. Absolutely no difference. Um, what if that was my main radio? How would I react? How would I have fun on shortwave? So uh, first things, of course, you guys have seen on the first few videos, a little bit of the quirky use of the radio. And I noticed that this here, the tuning knob, seems to have some kind of slack that had in the contacts. And as I was tuning and playing around with it, it was getting better and better as the videos went on. And the last few videos that I posted, actually, you could see that it's actually pretty frequency stable, even though it does drift slightly. But it came back to what I was, you know, uh, used to, to the normal of what this radio should be about. And actually, this morning is working great also. So uh, one of the first things, of course, it tells me is that I need to use this radio more often. Uh, I will also use this radio more often because, honestly, um, you know, when you compare a radio like that, for example, to, uh, let's say, the XH Data here, this is a very neat radio, but look at the speaker and look at the speaker size of the Ethon. Uh, of course, the audio quality and the fact that it has separate bass and treble controls is really, really amazing. The audio is fun. And what I mean is, you know, when you listen, for listening to a program, for example, for listening to something that you want to hear on the bands, it actually does an amazing job at doing that. And uh, I think this is probably a very positive point for this receiver because it makes, you know, listening a pleasure. And, you know, once you've, uh, once I fixed that and now you see the, how, how stable it is, it's actually very cool because you kind of uh, have a nice listen. Yesterday the BBC on 7300 kilohertz was a pleasure to listen to on this radio and the audio was great and you know what I'm gonna use this radio a little more often because I you know I think it's a word to the radio. Now uh, I've had a lot of people comment and question um, what I will do when I do these series you guys if you have questions or comments um, I do read them I do see them but what I'll do is every time I, uh, you know, did a video of a series like that, I always end up with what I think of this radio and I'll answer some of the questions that you guys had. <clears throat> so uh, concerning the drifting, first of all, a lot of you said, well, mine doesn't drift as much as yours. Um, even one comment was, uh, mine doesn't drift because it's the Grundig edition and it has nothing to do with the name because I tell you, it says Grandig or Ethan, it's exactly the same radio. There's absolutely no difference. The only thing that's changed is that the faceplate here, the name has changed, and that's it. It's just the branding. Uh, so for the drifting, yes, because in the first videos, it drifted a lot. But you know what? It was due to the fact that this, the contacts here were not good. Now that it's actually fixed, it's actually gone back to normal. And as you see here, I'm tuning 15770. It hasn't drifted or anything. It's back to what the radio I remember was like when I actually got it. Uh, a lot of people, some people saying, well, you know, I remember seeing one of those, but, you know, I, I resisted buying it. Maybe I should have bought it. Uh, you know what? This radio is an okay radio, and I cannot put anything more than okay. I can't say it's a great radio. It's just an okay radio. It's a beautiful radio. I got to say, if, for the looks, it's a sexy radio, and I mean... If you like big radios, it's a big radio. And these two aspects make it really nice. But on the operations, on the sensitivity, it's sensitive. Not as much as other radios are. For example, my XH Data is more sensitive than this. But it is sensitive. Uh, it's drawback, it overloads easily. Even on the telescopic, it often overloads on some of the signals, local signals. Um, it is an analog radio with a frequency um, counter readout, which makes it less accurate. And of course, because it's totally analog from A to Z, drifty a little bit. 
of this because of the circuitry but you know as you see if I leave it here and, and while I'm doing the video you've noticed that the frequency hasn't moved it's it doesn't drift a lot compared to some of the radios I have this one doesn't drift that much but it does drift I mean over an hour listening you will see that the display will slowly drift away but it isn't a a major problem it's an okay problem you know it's it's it doesn't drift like crazy it just it's it's manageable let's say uh narrow and wide filters depending on what you listen to which comes of nice uh of course am and shortwave bands one two three uh has fm and of course stereo fm of course on fm it's a beautiful radio to listen to for the music because of the big speaker and um i mean it it you know if you don't have it you're not really missing out on anything, honestly. It ain't one of those radios that, you know, you don't have it in your collection. And it, it's, it's, it's sad because, you know, it's just so good. It's okay. And if you haven't purchased this in the past and thought, well, you know, I'm looking at your videos, maybe I should have. No, unless you want to have, like me, dozens, dozens of radios. But... I do enjoy having in my collection, and it is a nice add to all of the, that I have. And one of the interesting and unique aspects, by the way, of this one is the fact that it has uh, outputs for uh, line-out outputs with RCA connectors. So this is kind of nice because you can, uh, you know, feed the audio out to some recording device, or you know, it's kind of that's kind of a nice add-on to this radio. Also, the uh, antenna connectors here in the back. For uh, you know, FM, FM cable, FM, and uh, AM shortwave antenna. So uh, what is nice here is it does say AM and shortwave, which means that this connector actually will probably work with AM and AM antenna, like the loop. Uh, if I can actually find a way to connect the loop, the text and loop on it in the connectors here might be interesting. Uh, actually, very very interesting. So, um, you know, overall a nice radio, but uh, honestly, not the, you know, it's not a killer radio. It's an okay radio. Um, nothing much more. It's sexy, great sound, but performance is just okay. And um, nothing amazing. We'll, we'll, we'll call it like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this series. And also another question that I have from a user. Somebody says, oh, is this based on the... Uh, DSP chips of other receivers. No, this has nothing DSP in it. This is totally analog from A to Z. I mean, and it's a single conversion. So it means that a signal that's very strong will actually appear 910 kilohertz up or down the frequency because it has images of the stations everywhere. So that means you got to know where you're tuning and you got to know when you're out of band or not because you might be fooled in thinking that a station is on, I don't know, 16, 700. When in reality, it's not at 16, it's at 15. It's in the 19-meter band. So um, knowing your international broadcast bands, knowing that some stations cannot be where they are, uh, really helps in knowing when you got an image or not, because this does suffer from images. And so this is not DSP at all. It's totally, totally analog. So uh, that, hope you enjoyed that little series. And uh, we're having another series today, of course. And uh, today's series uh, is coming up next. I'll show you my new What If video for uh, today, May 9th, 2019. Hope you enjoy my videos. If you do, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. And uh, if you've got questions, don't hesitate. 